because at least the way things are right now, I'm pretty much on the same page with, uh, you know, Siddhartha Gautama, you know, you know, base Buddha. That's, you know, there you go. Um, I'm pretty much on the same page as Siddhartha Gautama as saying all life is suffering. That's the first, uh, uh, that's the first noble truth that he posits is that all life is suffering. Hmm. And usually I take a different perspective. I use a different word. I don't say life. I distinguish between existence and life. I right, say that okay. all existence is suffering because existence, oh my God, is certainly hellfire. But life necessarily, that's, it has more of a, a positive kind of vibe to it. Kind of a, a nice, airy, you know, breezy feeling to it of, you know, like you say, you know, I want to have a good life. I want to live, you know, I want to live my best life, right? Yeah, all the same words there to express an existence, which is not all painful, excuse me, which is not all painful. And in that sense, that's, I, I feel like that's part of the reason why, you know, because you know, it's, it's rather utopian. I feel like that's, that's the reason one of the reasons why when we think about those kinds of things, the images that come up are so idyllic. They're so peaceful. They're so calm. Because you're talking about an existence without pain, a utopia on the individual level. Well, can I, there's a couple of different ways I go with this. If you can let me like get into it a little bit. I'm sorry, let you? It's your podcast. Please. Well, I, I just mean, like, <laughs> give, me the t- give me the time to elaborate. So, No, you're out of time. I'm kicking you off your own show. <laughs> okay. So, like, either what we mean here is, like, two different modes of experiencing existence itself and, like, like viewing existence itself, or life itself is a mode of existing within existence it's, so it's let, neither let, well it's, it's, let me oh, let oh, me yeah, explain what i'm your perspective i'm sorry well let me <laughs> let me explain what i mean by this because yeah. like this is what you describe here is sort of like anti nietzschean to be honest because like Deleuze explains in Nietzschean philosophy that this this is also like back to the pious mode of being versus the tragic mode of being. It's basically like he he explains how the Greeks had a notion in their religion that existence itself was inherently flawed. And this was the titanic notion of crime, basically. But what they did with their polytheism was they basically decided that whenever somebody went mad or whenever somebody went, like, quote-unquote, bad in society, they just blamed it on the gods. They said that this person was possessed by a god. They didn't blame it on the actual individual itself, but in this way, they're still blaming existence as inherently bad. But then when the Christian society came along with their monotheistic god, it shifted from titanic crime to Christian sin, so that not only is existence inherently flawed, it's also blameful for this flaw. And that's where, like, Catholic guilt comes from, and, like, Jewish guilt and all of that. And basically, it's this cultural view that developed through history. It's not natural. It's a sociocultural constructed view that existence itself is blameful for its own negativity and therefore worthy of punishment. So the pious mode of existence is basically that mode that is punitive and accusatory and blameful of other people for their quote-unquote crimes and sins simply by their own existence, which leads people to be treated that way into like prisons and things like that. But the tragic mode of existence, if I'm not going too fast, is basically the way that Dionysus, as described by Nietzsche, affirms all existence and all pain, not by internalizing it the way that Christ does, but by affirming it in its exteriority. So that actually, for Dionysus, like, existence itself 
is so holy that it actually necessitates a higher level of suffering that should then be affirmed instead of like blamed. So basically it's a shift from thinking that existence itself necessitate or yeah, existence itself necessitates suffering to thinking that suffering like validates existence. And so it's basically mm. it's almost a masochism, but it's also like a very anti-punitive way of viewing other people as well. Mm. That's a good way to do that's a perfect way to describe it actually. <laughs> because, you know, you're you're talking about a point of view here that is it's blaming existence, but it is firmly in the camp of opposing um opposing punishment and opposing blame on the person themselves i mean like you know it most of what i believe can be boiled down to simple axioms or not axioms you know like uh, figures of speech you know rules of thumb and in this aspect you know you can you know the the the, the figure of speech that you can use i didn't just fucking choose to be born right exactly <laughs> i didn't choose this exactly so how can i be blamed you know, for 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 the pain that that it incurs, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't follow. Right, that's kind of the point. Is like people aren't inherently bad just because they exist, and this is why. Which incidentally, incidentally, is also why I reject the notion of reincarnation, at least you know in the you know, Hinduistic kind of aspect, because it you know it implies yes, it does imply that existence is pain. But in the same aspect as you were saying before, um, you know, there's there is the aspect of karma, which is, you know, you do bad shit. You get to keep living. Good for fucking you. You get to <laughs> keep on living. And that's your punishment. You know, there isn't necess- there are hell worlds. Yeah, I'm, I think I may be wrong. Um, but in this aspect, you know, what what it's conveying to you is you're going to keep fucking up until you finally do everything right you know obviously you know it you know plugs into the just world you know fallacy as well you know but but the message there is ultimately you're going to keep fucking up and you're going to keep being reincarnated you're going to keep going around this merry-go-round uh until you you know until your you know uh, uh, eternal soul decides to you know you know get the message that you know maybe i shouldn't do things that are perceived that are construed as bad by society Hmm. i still feel as though you're like it's not to be like i don't know like some kind of edgelord or something but it it does seem like it all comes back somehow to cucking yourself to society though (laughs) when that's not really like the delusion point the point is more of like it's more of like a freedom you, yeah, you keep you keep you keep bringing up the names of philosophers here, and because no, I get I'm, this I'm from books, <laughs> I'm absolutely not saying that you know I I you know my ideas exist in a vacuum, but I don't really go out of my way to read books. Right, yeah. I really don't. Like I I wear it on my sleeve. I'm fucking lazy. I don't want to read dry ass, boring ass books. Like I mean, you know, the ideas themselves. That's what I'm interested in. That's what I'm interested in. Yeah, and, and in our age, you can get them way, from the internet. If someone wants to go out of their way to explain the ideas, I'll listen. I'll absolutely listen. But I'm not going to sit down and fucking read the book. Right, yeah. Is that selfish? Yeah, I think it is. <laughs> but that doesn't, that, that doesn't really matter to me. Because I'm talking about, you know, expanding a field of knowledge here. At least, you know, my field of knowledge. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about here. Because if you can explain the idea well enough that it resonates well enough that it that it clicks and makes sense there's beauty in that yeah it creates an expansion Hmm. but then of course you run into the problem you know like uh you know more equals better uh in terms of you know philosophy and knowledge that is you know to you know, be this this annoying cunt that's always you know questioning everything. You know, oh, is that really the case? Ooh, I don't know. <laughs> Let's talk about it. But you know, I mean, is that a good thing? Is that a bad? I, I don't. I don't know. I I want to. All I want to do 
is roll up into this 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 uh, uh, big boy philosophy school, <laughs> get get integrated in there, you know, make him think I'm all cool with them, and then just drop a fucking bomb and leave. <laughs> like literally, or what do you mean? Uh, <laughs> no, not literally. No, uh, attention, all feds. I'm an old, I'm a loving American citizen. Okay. What? All right. Um, did you get your clip? Did I get my? Oh yeah, we're definitely clipping that part. But <laughs> but um, God, what was I gonna say? I don't find reading philosophy to be boring. I love it. Honestly, me, me personally, I love it. No, I mean, yeah, no, no, you're talking about you. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, it just suits me. Yeah, for me, you know, like, you know, I, I've been extra clear here, you know. It's not about reading the book. It's about the ideas. Right. You know, if a person can, can you know, put their ideas a certain way, or if they can communicate them well enough, you know, like in a philosophy book, if the, if the writer is... is um, um, talking about their ideas uh, in an easily understandable way, in a charismatic way, I think that matters especially, um, then that, I think, that's that's awesome. I love it when I can pick up a book and feel like I'm having a conversation with someone. Because usually I can't sit down and focus for that, uh, you know, unless I feel like I'm really talking to someone, right? Because the thing I notice in philosophy in, in, you know, one of the bigger reasons why I want to, you know, walk into that, you know, that big boy, you know, philosophy school uh, with my, you know, uh, metaphorical <coughs> bomb um, is there's this cult of, of rationality yeah. and this, this cult of logic and, you know, trying to, to you know, make sure that you know, your point is, is, you know, the, the one that wins, you know, and it's, it's a fucking, it's, it's a hand job contest. Totally. I, I can't, and I can't stand it. It's, I totally it's, agree. it's people trying to duke out ideas with each other, you know, and, you know, and just consistently, you know, just chit chat all fucking day long about what they think, you know, the best idea here is, but then that just leads to people getting trampled over. Yeah, and that's not that's not fun. That's not fair. And that has I mean, a it's, tendency it's, it's, to. I mean, it's fun if it's fun if you're the one trampling. I mean, you know, Schadenfreude is a force to be reckoned with, but you know, it has a tendency to almost dilute the ideas themselves into just little logically consistent quips that you bludgeon each other over the head with, instead of like, like sound bites. Yeah, instead like of like interesting, in yeah. deep, expanding, conceptual creation which is what philosophy is kind of supposed to be or like actually is in reality in some way right Ooh, low battery 10 percent. let's see 46 minutes that's enough material for you right <laughs> well i want to go longer because we're rolling here 